Integrated Pest Management. We hear this phrase a lot today. We introduced IPM, or Integrated Pest Management, last week in our Tuesday Quick Tip. Let's take a deeper look into the strategy of IPM. Hi, I'm Brad, a University of Missouri Extension Master Gardener of Greater Kansas City. In today's Tuesday Tip, we'll explore the various strategies of IPM and how we can use each to control pests. Integrated Pest Management is a science-based approach that combines a variety of techniques that gardeners can use to manage pests with the least impact to our environment. The first step of IPM is identify and monitor. Strolling through the gardens every day, enjoying the entire garden for its beauty, and being on the lookout for any potential pest issues. Do you see holes in the leaves? Are your plants wilting? Do you see insects on your plants? First, you must identify what the pests are. It may take some looking. Often insects are small, hidden, under leaves, and or camouflaged. There are many resources available for identifying pests. Apps for your cell phone can help identify and may give you a head start on your web search. There are a number of local resources available, including your MU Extension Office, the MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic, and the Master Gardener Hotline to assist you. We're interested in what works for you, so comment on your favorite identification resource. By monitoring, you can determine how pervasive the problem is, total pest infestation or just a few nibbles on the leaves. Now you need to evaluate the problem. Is the condition bad enough to warrant action? How detrimental to the plant and garden is the problem? Chewed foliage, bark, missing berries, powdery mildew, sunburned leaves, etc. Will it lead to plant death or is it a temporary and the plant will recover without intervention. Can you tolerate the damage or do you need to do something? IPM can seem overwhelming, but to this point, you have gone down the path of observation, maybe finding a pest, identification, and then deciding on your tolerance level. Prevention is both preemptive and a reactive tool of IPM. It is the first line of control in the garden. The sage gardener once said an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of pesticide. Keep a garden journal to help you identify past problems and what solutions worked or didn't work. Use your past experience to give you a head start on preventing past problems from reoccurring. Now that we've done our homework to identify exactly what the pest is, let's look at the IPM tools to solve our pest problem. IPM tools are usually divided into four basic methods, cultural, mechanical, biological, and chemical. Let's examine each tool and some of the ways you might use the tool in your garden. Cultural methods help to minimize pest problems by making the environment inhospitable to the pest. Right plant, right place. A plant in a well-suited spot is healthier, more easily cared for, and able to take no notice of the occasional pest. It is one of the easiest cultural methods that you can implement. Other means of cultural control strategies might mean purchasing disease and drought resistant plants, or making sure to use the proper water and fertilization schedules. Even crop rotation is a cultural strategy. It was used as early as 6,000 years BC while they didn't call it IPM, it was apparent that moving your crops, even in your small home gardens, can disrupt pest cycles and improve soil structures. Maybe this has happened to you. Your shade-loving hostas now have severely burned leaves. My mother-in-law recently lost a mature tree with hostas underneath. So now, instead of being in full shade, they are now in full summer exposure. So we had to move the shade-loving plant to prevent that leaf scorching. By relocating the hosta to a shady area, next year's plant will have the cultural environment it needs. This is IPM. We identified the problem, learned and evaluated the cause, and took action to eliminate any cultural issues. Now, let's look at the mechanical method. Mechanical tools restrict 
pest access to the plant or area, or if already present, physically removing them by some means. This may be a weed barrier, sticky traps, hand picking the pest, trimming off heavily infested branches, regular water spray to knock off a pest, any physical action with no chemical control involved. A really frustrating time for gardeners is when the local wildlife begins to feast on the fruit and berries we have nurtured all season long. So before the fruit begins to ripen, cover the fruit with netting to keep our friends from dining on our future blackberry pie. Another example of mechanical IPM occurs when the Japanese beetles arrive. In the cool of the morning or evening, hold a bucket of soapy water under the leaves or flowers with the Japanese beetles on it and brush the bug into the bucket. The next IPM tool are the biological methods. You might consider these the three P's, predators, parasites, and pathogens. Predators are the natural insect enemies and will naturally appear when pests are present. Parasites are insects that lay their eggs on a specific insect, and when the eggs hatch, the young feed and destroy their host insects. Learn to identify the good bugs. Most are extremely susceptible to pesticides and can use our help by choosing plants that provide them pollen, nectar, and shelter. Pathogens are bacteria, virus, and fungi that naturally reduce pest populations. Bt being the most popular and readily available bacteria for use on very specific pests in the home garden. With growing concerns over a gardener's environmental impact, the chemical methods of IPM might be one of last resort. Always use the chemical option that has the least environmental impact. Remember, the label is the law. More information can be found on the MU or your local Extension website. At the end of all your efforts, always monitor your actions for effectiveness, record in your journal your successes and failures, and use the knowledge gained for future action. We encourage you to identify, identify, and identify your pest. Alter your tolerance for perceived pests. Control by prevention and decide whether taking further action is better than the damage to our ecosystem with pesticide control. We hope you enjoyed today's Tuesday tip on IPM. Subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out on our next video. Drop a comment to let us know what IPM methods worked for you and if you're interested in learning more about an IPM topic. See you in the garden.